Hello, class. Uh, we are continue on the recorded lectures for section 5.2, which deals with rational functions. And so the first uh, recorded lecture touched on the complication of the graph. If you could remember one over X, and I, I showed you how to graph it in a very unsophisticated way, just plugging in a bunch of points. But you can see how complicated the graph is, even for that simple of a rational function. And we talked about domain. And now what we're going to do is move on to talk about the vertical asymptote and the uh, x-intercepts and the y-intercepts of those particular equations. So uh, I think the best way to get started is to just get the whiteboard out and do a few examples. And so uh, with regard to these examples, the first one will be uh, equation. Let me grab my little paper here and let's do this one. Uh, f of x is x minus 6, x plus 3. So again, just to remind you, the domain is all real numbers, except when the denominator is zero. In this case, this would be x such that x does not equal minus three. So when you calculate the vertical asymptotes, there are two things you want to do. First thing is make sure the equation is reduced. So when you calculate the asymptotes, the equation needs to be in its simplest form. So you look at x minus six and x plus three, and you say to yourself, that is simple, simplest form. You can't um, cancel out the x plus three and with the x minus six. So you're looking for a reduced fraction type of aspect of it. And then after you do that, uh, the vertical asymptotes is, again, when the denominator equals zero. And so when you do this, it would be x plus three equals zero. Solve for x, you get x equals minus three. So how would that work on our graph? And we're gonna uh, do a lot of graphs in the next section, but this would be one, two, minus three. And typically when you indicate a uh, asymptote, it's a dotted line in this case, it would look like that. And so why are we finding these asymptotes? It gives you a, a lot of clues on how to sketch these graphs. And so that's the vertical asymptote. So what is the x-intercept in this case? Remember that uh, is when y equals zero. And so when you look at this, you would get zero equals x minus six over x plus three. And you want to say to yourself, the only way to make the fraction zero is what? The numerator has to be zero. So when you solve for this, you would get x minus six equals zero, and you would see x equals six. So if you plotted that, they can't uh, see that there, right? But the x-intercept would be right there. So what is the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept occurs when x equals zero, and that one's usually the easier one to do. And so let me get pull that through. And so in this case, x equals zero, right? So you have uh, y equals zero minus six over zero plus three. So minus six over three, and that would give us minus two. So if you tried to plot this, the y-intercept would be down here at y equals minus two. Example number one. So here's the new stuff that we talked about. 
And so let's do a couple more of these. So say like we had this equation. Uh, say like we had the same equation. This would be x minus six. And say like we do x plus three again and x minus six here. So now when you do the domain, remember you do it on the original function. So this would be all real values of x such that x does not equal, it would be uh, minus three or six. And so the next thing would be, this is not in its simplest form, right? So to get it in its simplest form, what you want to do is to cancel the common factors that we have here. And so the simplest form, I'll rewrite it in green, is one over x plus three. So the vertical asymptote, again, remember it's an equation of a line, x plus three equals zero. So again, the same vertical asymptote, x equals minus three. So you see that the domain and the vertical asymptotes will always, uh, the vertical asymptotes is always in the spot where the domain is undefined, right? But there could be more in the domain that's undefined than there are vertical asymptotes because that's where this cancellation comes in. So why intercept? So that's when x equals zero. And so you plug that in, one over zero plus three. So that y-intercept in this case would be one-third. What about the x-intercept? That one's a little bit trickier because that's when y equals zero. And so remember, the only way to get a fraction to be zero is the, denom or the numerator, right? What's on top has to be zero. And so in this case, there's no variable up there, right? It's just the number one. So in this case, there are no x intercepts. So let's uh, end this part of the recorded lecture with one more example. And this example would be, uh, let's do uh, x minus six again over x squared plus one. Call that f of x. So So to do this analysis, we look at the domain first, right? So you're looking for x squared plus one can't equal zero. And when you do that calculation, you can see it ends up being minus one. And when you do the square root, right, it'd be x equals plus or minus the square root of minus one. So like we said before, there's no way to get a real number in for x that causes the denominator to be zero, only the complex numbers, right? So the domain in this case would be all real numbers. When that's the case, guess what happens to your vertical asymptotes? There are none, right? Because again, there's no way to make the denominator zero. So the vertical asymptotes or not. Okay, so let's do our intercepts, see what they are. Uh, so uh, again, the y-intercept is when x equals zero. So it'd be zero minus six over zero squared plus one. And so you get minus six over one. And so the y-intercept is minus six. So that would be zero minus six. And so what's the x-intercept? That's when y equals zero. And again, when you set this equal to zero, it's when the numerator equals zero, right? So it'd be x minus six equals zero. So x would be six. So the x-intercept is six, zero. So I give you uh, three examples for uh, domains, which we've talked about already. 
the intercepts, and now the vertical asymptotes. So the next lecture will focus on what we call the horizontal asymptotes. Those are quite a bit more challenging to calculate. And I'll introduce this idea of an oblique asymptote as well.